باب السواك سواك is بكسر السين سواك we make a كسر of the scene يطلق على الفعل الذي هو التسوك um, سواك so a سواك is the miswak which is the thing that we use it's, it's like a twig نعم to brush your teeth with to clean it um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so Imam Abdul Ghani Abdul Wahid al-Maqdisi al-Hafiz he after he brought Bab al-Siwak he brought this hadith which is the 17th hadith he says Anabi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anqal lawla an ashukka ala ummati la amartum bis-siwak inda kulli salam this hadith is narrated by Imam al-Bukhari and also Imam muslim Bukhari narrated this hadith in two places in Sahih. Kitab al Jum'ah and Kitab al Tamanni. Kitab al Tamanni. And Kitab al Jum'ah and Kitab al Tamanni. Whereas Muslim narrated this hadith in Muslim narrated this hadith in Kitab al Tahara. The Sahabi that narrated this hadith is Abu Hurairah and we took his biography in the second hadith. The Prophet he said, Lawla Lawla in the Arabic language, to feed al wujud. Lola means if I did not. If I did not. Eh. Ashuk lola an ashuka. If I did not fear. Lola, if I did not fear. An ashuka to burden my cre my ummah. To uh, burden my ummah. La amartuhum, I would have ordered them. Bisiwaki to use the miswak in the kulli salah in every prayer that they pray. I would have ordered them. In the kulli salah means in the fi'l kulli salah before every prayer. I would have ordered them. Okay. So this shows the importance and the position that the miswak has. But that the reason why the Prophet chose not to say that you have to use miswak was because why? Khashyah and Ashuk alayhim. It's fear that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, I may burden my ummah on it. The fiqh of the hadith. That the first one is an am an al amra lil ijab. Um the fiqh first fiqh, the fiqh that we take from this hadith is that any command that comes in the sharia it shows obligation unless something diverts it from it. And here the Prophet diverted it. As if he said, Ali sallallahu said, if I didn't fear for my ummah, I would have ordered them. The order here shows that it would have been obligation meaning. So the obligation originally shows, the order originally shows obligation, a command. Two, أن المندوب ليس مأمورا به المكلف على وجه الإزام. That the mandub, the, the shay which is mubah, sorry, the shay which is sunnah, sorry, with the shay, that's the thing that's sunnah. The Sharia has not ordered you to do it in a forceful manner. It hasn't. But rather, it urges you to do it. And it recommends for you to do it. And it prefers that you do it. Number three. Istihbabu siwaki wa fadlu. The virtue of the siwak and that it's recommended. And that it's from the guided sunan. From the guided ways. Five. كمال رحمته the complete mercy of the messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام and how concerned he was for his ummah not to burden them on that which he he knows that they are unable to do Allah said about the prophet لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم a messenger has come to you from from your own selves عزيز عليه ما عنتم and then Allah says حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم he is very merciful and kind and tender towards you. Surah Al Tawbah, Ayah 128. Number five, Raf'ul Haraj, uplifting burdens, Wal Mashaqqa, and hardship is Mimhasin al Sharia. It is the greatness of this religion. Fal Islam Udin Yusr, Islam is a religion of ease. La Usra fihi. Hardship does not lie in Islam. Wala haraja. And no burden. Six. Dar'ul mafasidi. 
the removing of harm muqaddamun takes precedence over ala jalb al to bring good pushing away the harm takes precedence over bringing any form of good that's a principle that we are going to take inshallah ta'ala in qawa'id al fiqhiyah 7 ta'akkud mashru'iyyat al siwak 'inda kulli salah the emphasis of the legislation of the siwak for every single prayer the emphasis of the legislation of the siwak at, at every prayer. Eight, the scholars, العلماء, the scholars have mentioned mawatina, the places where the miswak is highly recommended. The scholars have mentioned the times when the siwak, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. When it's highly recommended. One, عند قراءة القرآن when reciting the Quran. So it's 11. The first one is عند قراءة القرآن when reciting the Quran. Two, عند دخول البيت when, enter, when entering to the house. Three, عند اصفرار الأسنان when your teeth color changes. Four, عند إرادة النوم when you want to go to sleep. Five, عند الاستيقاظ من النوم when waking up from sleep. Six, عند الأكل when you want to eat. Seven, عند الوتر when you're praying the witr prayer. Eight, في السحر in the middle of the night. Huh? Eight? Eight. Nine, عند التغير الفم when your mouth changes the odor that comes out of it. Ten, عند الوضوء when you're doing your wudu. And eleven, عند قيام الليل. I went standing up for the prayer of the night. Number 10, the fiqh of the hadith. وَذَكَرَ أَهْلُ الْعِلْمِ فَوَائِدٌ حَوْلَ التَّسَوُّكِ The scholars have mentioned benefits that are in brushing your using miswak. One. There are four. One. يُسْتَحَبُّ أَنْ يَكُونَ السِّوَاكِ مِنْ شَجَرَةِ الْأَرَاكِ It is recommended that the miswak is from the tree of Arak. And it's a form of the miswak which is not dry, fully dry, and it's not fully wet. And it's a bit soft. Naam. Two, yustahabu tasawwuk bil yasar. It is recommended to do the siwak with your left, and not with your right. Three, because remember we mentioned last principle, last time the principle, anything that has to do with removing filth or dirt or anything, it's always good to do with the, the left. Three. يجوز التسوق في المسجد. It is permissible to do سواك in the masjid. ولا حجة and there is no proof لمن منع ذلك anyone who says you can't do it. That who claims زعم من منه أنه من إزالة الأقذار. Anyone who claims that it's removing dirt from your mouth, huh? And that you can't do it in the masjid, they have no حجة or no proof regarding this matter. Ten. Ten. لم يثبت في كيفية التسوق طولا أو عرضا شيء. وما ورد فكله لا يحتج به. There is no authentic chain of narration that has been submitted to us that indicates how the siwak should be done. It, there isn't. Okay? Neither should it be done like this, nor should it be done like that. There's no authentic chain of narration. Okay? <clears throat> what are the benefits in doing siwak? What are the benefits in doing it? There are five benefits. Mutahhirun lil fam. It purifies and cleans your mouth. Two, مرضاتٌ للرب. It pleases your Lord. Three, يشد اللثة. يشد اللثة. So, يذهب الحفر. It removes and takes off the harm which is in between your teeth. Um, and it makes you lose the, the bacteria out of your mouth. اختلاف <coughs> scholars. The scholars have a dispute regarding is it preferred and is it recommended to do the siwak with your right or your left. Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah he chaptered a position in his Majmu' uh, al-Fatawa and he clarified it extensively after a question was put to him rahimahullah. When it was put to him rahimahullah. He was asked, Rahimahullah, in the 21st volume, page 108. 108. So the 21st volume, 108. 
go to go to it and inshallah read it you will find a mashallah very um, very good uh, extensive explanation by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and as I said it, what is the strongest is um, that using your left is the one that Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah points out and that it's recommended so Shaykh ibn Taymiyyah brings all the kalam of the scholars who said it now الحديث الثامن عشر The 18th hadith عن حذيفة بن اليمان رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا قام من الليل يشو سفاه بالسواك حذيفة رضي الله تعالى عنه narrated this hadith the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he said كان رسول الله first of all the hadith is narrated by Bukhari it's narrated by Bukhari and Muslim Bukhari narrated this hadith in three places in his Sahih and it's and it's his wording it's his wording the first place he narrated it in is Kitabul Wudu Kitabul Wudu Kitabul Jum'ah and Kitabul Tahajjud Muslim narrated in one place Kitabul Tahara Kitabul At-Tahara the Sahabi that narrated the hadith his name is Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman his kunya is Abu Abdul Rahman his father and he were both companions. His father, Al Yaman, and Hudayfa himself, they are both companions. Shahida Hudayfa wa Akhu Sufwan wa Abu Huma Uhudan. Hudayfa and his father, both of them participated in the battle, and their brother, so the father, the brother, eh? the father, the two brothers, Hudayfa and his brother Safwan, and in their father, Al Yaman. They both all participated in the battle of Al Uhud. They all participated in the battle of Uhud. His father was killed that day. A Muslim killed him by accident. By accident, his father was killed. One of the Muslims killed him. He was, may Allah be pleased with him. Min akabir al-sahaba, he was from the great, great companions. Wa sadatihim, and their heads, and the most, one of the famous sahabas he was. Wa huwa sahibu sir rasulillah, and he was known as the, the uh, companion who had the secrets of the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he was the one who knew the hypocrites by name. Wa a'lamu sahabati bi akhbari wa ayani munafiqin. He knew their name. A lot of the Sahabas took knowledge from, narrated hadith from him, and a lot of the Tabi'een took from him. His ahadith are famous, and you find them in the Sahihain, and in the Sunan, and the Masaneed, and the, the Ma'ajib, you find them in all, mm-hmm. and the Dawaween of Islam. Umar radiallahu ta'ala, and he gave him the wilayah, the governor. He made him a governor on Al-Mada'in. Mada'in. He made him a governor. Wa remain in Mada'in, hatta mat, until he died. بعد مقتل عثمان after the killing of Uthman he died رضي الله عنه uh, so he died after Uthman 40 nights after Uthman بأربعين ليلة he died after نعم uh, this hadith this hadith deals with the ruling of the siwak when waking up um from sleep um, or waking up or standing up for the prayer sorry so he wake standing up for the prayer he said kana rasulullah the messenger used to be idha qama if he stood up the prophet was one if he stood up min al for the night yashu sufahu bisiwaki he would clean his mouth with the siwak alayhi salatu wasalam he would clean his mouth ma ma'na yashu yashu means yudalliku asnanahu he would clean it and he would run the miswaq on his mouth alayhi salatu wasalam idha qama min al idha qama min al means if he woke if he woke up from the sleep alayhi salatu min nawm al for the prayer this is what he would do mm-hmm. the fiqh of the hadith the fiqh of the hadith is mahabbatu rasul first one is mahabbatu rasul the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's love ha lin nadafati for the love he had for purity and cleanliness وَكَرَاهِيَةُ and that he disliked لِرَائِحَةِ الْكَرِيهَةِ he disliked odor that was bad he hated it two استحباب السواك it is recommended 
to use siwak when you're waking up for the Qiyamul Layl is recommended. وَالْمُبَالَغَةِ فِيهِ Rather, it is preferred that you go hard on it, very hard. وَبِخَاسَةٍ لِمَنْ يُرِيدُ الصَّلَاةِ Specifically, if you want the prayer. Three, إِسْتِحْبَابُهُ عِنْدَ كُلِّ تَغْيِيرٍ عِنْدَ كُلِّ تَغْيِيرٍ لِلْفَمْ He also used to like, alayhi salatu salam, to, uh, and he recommended and he liked to clean his mouth in any time or wherever his mouth would change, alayhi salatu salam. Four. Four. Al-ihtimamu bin nadafa To give a lot of consideration towards cleansiness. Wal-ri'ayatu sihhatu ala dawam And to be consistent and considerate upon um, healthiness, to be healthy uh, always. That's what Islam is about. And this is, shows you the complete and uh, goal and objective that Islam has is that you your well-being your well-being now